this because I, sometimes I forget. But here we are. Thank you guys for joining again. I'm so happy to see you. This is going to be a lot of fun painting this uh, incredible uh, bird flying. It's a macaw, I guess. But so what I really love about this is the movement, as I mentioned. And of course, there's amazing shapes here. There's also the value. See how the, the swing here is a little bit darker. The background is darker, so it's going to make the bird really pop. Uh, I purposefully actually picked a different uh, size paper this time just to kind of emphasize the the long format and really vertical. So yeah, why not for a change? But you can use any format. You can paint it on horizontal if you want, but as long as you can just fit it and you can crop it at any time after that if you choose to. But let's quickly start. So I'm always using this. Now I'm using the 5B pencil, which I don't recommend really, something lighter, but I'm using a darker pencil because I, I'd like you to see how this whole drawing process go. So always look at for the big shape, look for the big shapes, look for direction. So first thing that strikes me is there is one wing here, then there is another one going this way. And obviously we pay attention to how much volume does this whole thing take. So pretty much it's gonna go this way. And then we have this interesting tail going that way. And it, in my case, probably it's gonna go outside of the paper. I probably will crop it because I have the tendency to make things larger and larger and larger. So, okay, so here we go. Uh, here is this wing. Just looking at the big shapes. Then the, the head is going to be somewhere there. Pay attention to directions and tilts. Like his body is not straight. If you notice, there is a bit of a tilt going this way. Uh, some feet sticking out. Uh, just very sporadically. I'm just putting main points in certain and measuring how everything is. Uh, and this way you can easily fix if you make a mistake in the process. So here is that wing. So it has a direction going this way. Look at how this overall silhouette is. And a fabulous tail. Really cool going out. I'm just looking at, the, again, big shape. Uh, obviously I did everything again bigger and bigger. So my, this these feathers will be cropped out of my page of my paper so basic directions don't worry again about any details uh, if you overdo the lines and I'd like to erase them a little bit so they don't interfere too much with the painting but we don't erase them completely even if they show so here we go and we continue with the feathers And again, pay attention to directions. So they're pretty much going kind of a, in a, like a fan spreading out. Uh, they are not gonna be equally spaced. Some are closer, some are not. And the, these feathers have a certain shape. So we pay attention to that. All right. And the colors are really beautiful. And we're gonna use again a very limited palette. So I'm just commenting as I go, looking at all this. So a couple more feathers are sticking out here. Why I love birds, uh, painting birds. They're just fascinating, really. And they're, you can, we, we will paint some more static birds. I was gathering some reference of, you know, just regular cardinals and just little blue birds but why i love birds is that there's so much so so many fun colors and textures and all these feathers are creating some really incredible shapes and textures so that's why i love painting birds i don't have that many in my portfolio but if any chance i get i really love to paint them so the problem is if you have to submit something for for a competition, you have to have your own photo. You have to take it yourself. So I don't know, it's, it, a trip to the zoo helps. Or the aviary, whatever they have, these amazing birds that help to take. Trip to my backyard. Yeah, that's awesome. If you have a nice camera. I have a bunch, I have a bunch of feeders 
and I catch birds and flood all the time. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, definitely. If you I have a good camera for it, too. Oh, that is amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah, you can do so much with that. But, yeah, they're really fun to paint, especially if you capture them in motion. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, I love, I love capt capturing them in flight. It's not always easy. That's the hardest. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, unbelievable. Okay, so if you just pay attention to, again, proportions. Obviously, this beak is quite massive, and it has this shape going like that. All right, so we have somebody joining us. That's good. Nobody's lost. So I want to make sure that here yeah, this blue area on top. And again, if it's not quite quite there, that's okay. But it still has to be a uh, somewhat close. So pay attention to these shapes. Okay, I'm just gonna erase a little bit. And here we have a few more feathers sticking out. Now that foot is important. We are not gonna be too going too crazy with that foot because, but we can just have a suggestion when we paint it. It's gonna be a little bit of a suggestion because imagine this thing is flying, so it won't be a cutout. I know how in this photo everything looks, it's a cutout obviously shot perfectly, but we will create the movement with our paints. So these are basically the directions that we will go into. Okay, so here we go, foot, another foot. Yeah, maybe his body should have been longer, so I'm just seeing uh, a few issues here with my drawing, but that's fine. Or maybe that foot, there are some little toes. I don't know what they are, they're tiny. They should be going here. All right, and something is popping in. All right, so just basic and follow, follow the direction of these feathers. Obviously, they're going this way, that way. Maybe it's going to just be cropped out in this case because they need to be longer. All right, and going this way. So think about the structure, there's stuff going on underneath, it's a three-dimensional shape everywhere. All right, so we're ready to paint. Let me know if you guys are ready, but just a very, very rough initial sketch of how this is going to be. And you can always, always achieve more detail in the painting but for now we just have the basic shapes that's all we care about the beak obviously needs to be slightly bigger I'm just gonna fix that slightly bigger yeah birds are fascinating absolutely even the one the more dramatic ones like crows and some birds of prey, they're also cool to paint in a very monochromatic way. So maybe one of the reference, one of our sessions, we can just pick one of those birds. And if you guys have some really cool pictures um, yourself, feel free to share with me and maybe we can use those because I just go randomly online and find whatever I see. I'll, I'll send you a few. Okay, awesome. That will be great, yeah. Okay, okay, so what I'm seeing here is I move his his head should be a little bit higher uh, If you guys still drawing are you still drawing it? Do I have time to fix it? <laughs> I may need to move this slightly Higher because his body seems quite squished so I'll just Raise that a little bit All right, so people are joining us. Hello, everybody. We're just drawing now our bird. We still haven't started painting yet. And I just moved his, here, his head up a bit because it seemed a bit squished, the whole body. So anyway.
anyway, a lot of lines. <laughs> but we will use very strong colors. Everything will be nice and bright and vibrant, so nothing to worry about. All right, and we are ready to paint. And the sun is showing, the sun is coming out. And as you can see, again, I did say it, but I'll say it again, these feathers, they're not super parallel. There is a main direction, but as you can pay attention, some are thicker, some are thinner, different proportions. See this one sticking out a little bit more. So it's it's an organic, it's a live being. So nothing is completely, completely perfect, like a man-made object. So okay, so here we go. Are you guys ready? Let me know if you're ready and we can just start painting. Thumbs up. I see thumbs up. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. awesome. Great, so again, clean water, big brush. Whoever hasn't, if you guys haven't taken this class before, for the new students, we always use this big, I use this big flat. You can spray, actually, if you want. Uh, I prefer this big brush because at least I can control where I wanna um, put water. Here, from different brushes. So here, I'm just wetting the background. I'm going to start with the background. I'm putting clean water. We're going to do wet on wet. And we, we're working from outside in, from the background towards the actual bird. And we're going to be free and bold and crazy, just the same way we painted the waves. For those who attended that class, oh yeah, we had a lot of fun with those waves. So it was paint throw being thrown around and stuff splashing all over the place. <laughs> That's how, what we're going to do. So very quickly, we're going to make some nice dark color. I'm grabbing some indigo here. I'm going to mix a nice puddle. I cleaned my palette as of late because it was starting to get really crazy looking. So I'm just grabbing some blue, some indigo, and it's not going to be super dark, but it's, it's going to really drive it lighter so very bold very bold and brave i'd like you to just go around and have some nice fun brush strokes we're going to use the same on this side and you can paint a little bit around these nice feathers but if you can create a bit of a movement see how i'm creating movement with my brush going in one direction and also you can take your uh, paper towel and as we you're still having everything really wet I'm taking my wetted my paper towel a little bit and I'm going to slightly wipe a bit like this this edge I just want this edge to this to to be wiped almost just to capture this motion and here we can do here. So basically softening up the edges because this bird is in motion. So I'm putting some clean water here in some of these edges. Some edges should stay sharp. And if I've lost some of the drawing, you can always lift it a little bit. So here, I think I lost a bunch, but that's fine. And if you can, you can have some of the background color going in because everything is interconnected in our paintings there is a harmony of colors it's a big it's a dance really and they're all connected so let's get a bit more of this dark color that we mix with the blue and indigo if you don't have indigo you can use black ivory black or just mix blue and brown it's going to get you this uh, more of a grayish tone so i'm just throwing some more color in this direction I'm not copying this texture that it has there. I, I like these movements, so we can do that in our case. Have some edges sharp, but let's kill some of the other edges. So here I'm just going to go like that. And without overdoing it, maybe just wipe a little bit because that's how we capture the motion. Basically, you see how some of these edges are still soft. 
some may stay with Sharpa. So very quickly we wet it. So now on the top, I'm grabbing again this dark color and quickly throwing it. And here we can totally go into the actual feathers because this is where the dark area of the feathers uh, is. And we will really connect everything. So I'm just grabbing a bit of a darker color and slowly but surely so I'm getting, getting some more water. more water and really just put this color in starting to now build this bird and the feathers so now we can get a bit of a darker tone and since we're over here let's just grab some of this color that we use for the background and we can quickly just dab a bit of darks to indicate these feathers and it's almost wet on wet but Just quickly uh, put these feathers there. But let's not go into the rest because first we need to do the yellow underneath. So I'm going to again soften this edge right here. We'll use a different color there. Um, and while we have it, yeah, let's grab some ultramarine. I'm just going to get a bit of an ultramarine maybe. Uh, probably not wrong color uh, something more with uh, green in it so I have the cerulean blue it's slightly better than phthalo blue so here I'm just gonna grab this color and immediately just put it here and make sure you have fun with your brush strokes I you guys know me those of you who taken this class a million times we always try to um, have a lot of fun with our brush strokes so I'm just lifting a bit here this edge see right away we're just gonna lift it but try to move your brush in any direction we're keeping the background simple because we want to focus on the bird so now with one big bigger brush we're gonna wet again now we're moving into the bird I'm just going to wet everything in the bird. Uh, you can leave the white area in his face. Don't don't wet it because we want to leave this white. So white of the paper. I have so much pen pencil on this. Oh, of course it's wet so I messed it up. So it's okay. Uh, here I'm just going to wet the whole thing. I'm just wetting it. And it's okay if some of, you know, some of the colors bleed. Just wet on wet. Wet on wet. I'm just wetting it. You can do a bit of a this whole clean, clean water spatter if you want to get a bit of funky texture. So now I'll grab some yellow. Let's grab this yellow. And I have a bright, I think it's um, which yellow I'm using. I believe it's permanent yellow deep from that. PWC set. So I'm going to grab some of this yellow and obviously there is light here and it's white so I'm just going to very it is bright right so it's super bright I'm just going in maybe mix with a little deeper more this is the I think this one is the Indian yellow I don't know I, I have it here it's nice and a little bit more orange so it's going to go into the bird and one big stroke a couple of big strokes here now we we can wipe a little bit just take out some of the white on that upper wing and slowly but truly we're moving down here with a warmer yellow we just wanted a lighter yellow, more um, blue lemon, more cooler yellow on the upper side, on the wing where the light is. Here we're going to get more different yellow. And I think my uh, feathers here is too wet, but you can just pop in some 
maybe a little bit of a yellow is coming through I just made a bit a few marks a few lines okay so still getting this nice warm yellow we're gonna get a little bit of orange I just want to move to a warmer yellow and popping in while well, everything is still wet just wet on wet I just want to build a little bit of his tummy here maybe a touch of red so we'll just keep it in this palette yellow blue basically with some darks and here is some of this orange and going down we can definitely have this tail a bit see if you squint your eyes you see the difference in the yellow so this this wing is very light that's going to be nice and light everything else is a bit more medium value so um, that's why i'm using this darker yellow more orange and maybe make some red in it to kind of have a bit of a darker value there and we're just throwing nice and fun this whole paint now while you have this color let's grab some of it you can even tap tap spatter a little bit so just picture this bird is flying color is flying everything is flying so it's going to be all in mid-air and we want to have a nice exciting painting we don't want to have you know a cut out fill in and it's, it's not a copy of a photo so it's all a just fun painting so here i'm just going to lift some of his leg of uh, feet rather i see it's a bit lighter and it's not so yellow i know it's a different tone but don't worry about it because we want to keep it limited palette we're not going to mix browns or any of that here i just want to add more yellow here on his wing slightly a little bit there and now i'm looking at there's a few blues so i'm taking the cerulean blue that i have if you don't have it just use any blue but the ultramarine is not quite the color it's something different so let's get almost like a green but it's blue it's mixing with the yellow of course <laughs> and it's okay so here we go with some blue it kind of keeps it in the family when the colors start mixing with each other and it does create a nice palette all together so here i'm just adding this blue on the in the tail and after everything is dry we can punch it with some local color really of whatever the color is all right then again you can lift if you've lost some of the lights on some of these <coughs> feathers something could be lifted you have to have fun while you paint this uh, there should not be any frustration or try to fix this try to fix that uh, it should be really fun because it is a exciting picture anyway so here we're still with the yellow just throwing yellow here and there um, i'm gonna fix a bit of this fix now that i said don't fix anything and then she just fixed something i i meant just throw in some yellow that's what i meant so let's get some bright yellow over here let's throw in some bright yellow right here and we just lift so create and destroy we we'll put it down we take it out that's the whole philosophy of create and, and destroy and don't don't take everything out just put it down but take maybe a third of it out if i have to be specific so that creates a really nice construction deconstruction that's the whole thing about cool painting it's not all struck constructing and building and building some things have to be taken out then add it back on uh, that creates a nice deep and more rich painting so here I'm gonna take this out of the edge and 
maybe just just uh, soften some <clears throat> some of these edges I'm just taking clean water just run it <clears throat> and we're going to take some of these edges out so now I see some more blue up here let's try to get this nice and clean and not quite mixing with the yellow we don't use any hair uh, dryers I think the painting naturally dries to the point where it needs to be even if it's still wet we still do what we have to do so here to get a little bit of a texture maybe it should be a dry brush I'm laying my brush horizontally sometimes or here have some things sticking out and going down it's nice to have a brush with a nice point longer hair nice point that's always creating really nice brush strokes so here you can lift a little bit i know there is a wider area around his face but you see how everything kind of blends in and it's, it's a lot of fun so now we're going to we're going to begin adding our darks we may end up painting this real quick <laughs> i have that feeling so i'm gonna get mix a very dark color i actually have ivory black uh, and and some indigo and not too much water so this should be real nice and thick less water kind of a creamy consistency and we will start now adding the black and the darks of these feathers here and squinting our eyes just looking at all this and making sure that we follow the values so again make sure your brush strokes are nice and bold don't overthink it don't don't be afraid uh, <clears throat> if it comes out to be a bit of a dry brush that's great it's almost like a sketch so move quickly it's gonna get this dry brush technique and here I'm just moving it out like that uh, the feathers have a bit of a shape in the end uh, and I will soften this this is not gonna be so sharp but for now, I just want to add this dark, more dark, and now I'm paying a little bit more attention to the shape. And if it's a dry brush, that's great. And a couple of more over here. And now we can get even some of the blue because I see some blues are popping in. Just very quickly, see how very quickly I make this quick stroke and it creates a nice dry brush technique. Now some of these dark ones could be softened, some edges could be softened. I just run a little bit of water. It's all movement, motion, they're not as outlined and even this edge here. All right, here we go. Everybody doing okay? I'm going to add some blue here. I just see some blues. All right. Okay, if you guys uh, want to... I, okay. I hear some echo. I don't know what's going on. So people are connecting probably to to the system. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift a little bit here on the upper part. See how I just added some blue because I see it there. And I'm just gonna lift some white some light areas. So, and a lot of fun stuff is happening here from the wet on wet and partly dry brush. So some areas were dry underneath, some were still wet. So that adds to the nice 
texture. So I'm keep going with the dark. I still I'm dipping here into this indigo, and we will add little, just tiny little dots. There's some stuff happening. Try to be nice and fun and sketchy with your brush stroke, strokes. And there's some more dark right here, wet on wet and around his tail. Very subtle movements. We don't want to be too crude. We want to be refined yet fun. So, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just accentuating some of our darks right here. So a little bit more indigo, maybe with ivory black. We can have it right here under his face. There is a bit of a shape. I think that's probably the darkest when you squint your eye. Uh, yeah, that and here the feathers on his wings are the darkest. So if you have nice contrast in your painting, that does create light. Like the strong contrast actually helps with the light in your painting. If you don't have much contrast and if everything seemed the same, the values seem kind of medium, you're not going to achieve the same effect of of drama that we are after and light really so i'm just adding this dark right here things can uh, kind of blend a little bit because everything is still wet over there i'm just moving up creating some lines okay a few outlines something dark is sticking out just a little closer oh that's part of the wing on the other side so part of the wing is sticking out it shouldn't be as dark as the wing on <clears throat> on the very top just a couple of lines to accentuate a couple of lines here not so dark again just dark but not too dark just to create those feathers isn't that easy i think it's easy right we thought it's so complicated but it's not it seems complicated on in the first uh, at a first glance but it isn't actually so it's like feathers background <laughs> and that's it anyway so i'm just adding a little bit more dark a little bit more dark here where it dries a bit lighter and maybe we'll get a bit blue mix this dark with a little bit of blue touch of blue and we're going to paint his beak now again now here you can pay attention to the drawing don't be too too uh, expressive here we should pay attention to the actual shape of that so here and we can uh, lift whatever the light area is and just working on that shape <coughs> It's important and I will lift some of the light areas on that beak because obviously it's three-dimensional we need to show the shape of it okay just a little bit lighter and there is an edge I think a slight edge right here you can lift that with a very tiny or a, just the tip of your brush just lift, lift a little line Okay, I'm just adding some yellow. Okay, well, people are coming in. Whoever is new, just keep painting. A lot of wet on wet, a lot of dry brush, some crazy blends. It's okay if it's not exactly like the reference. So now, always think about your focal point in our case i really uh, love this this area obviously it's really nice and high co in high contrast so we can pay attention here a little bit more i will grab a smaller brush 
or something that is not so big. So let me try the smaller brush here. And we can add this detail uh, around his eye. There are a bunch of lines. Before that, actually, uh, let me just add some yellow. Uh, it shouldn't be super, super white here. I just want to add some yellow here. I know it's white over there, but I need to add some tone so it's not all like a cutout. So slightly yellow. And we will create these lines on top of this, but now it may be a bit too wet, so we may have to wait a little bit. Just a little bit. So in this case, let's see what's happening. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pay attention to this beak here. Make sure that it's looking correct. There is definitely dark underneath. Okay, just dark. And just paying attention now to small details. Uh, again, there is a little suggestion you can do a suggestion of a claw there is a bit of a claw another claw another claw and then you can grab let's mix a different color for these feet so but keep it in the family so i'm just getting a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow so it's gonna mix this almost greenish muted tone i'm gonna use this color for the feet so nothing that's different looks a little dark a little bit dark so i will i'm going to lift so we're just going to lift some of these areas but keep it as a suggestion just just a bit of a suggestion maybe a little warmer maybe more of a orange i know it's not orange at all but it's all the light the light is reflecting the colors are reflecting we're just using that that same colors those same the same colors here everywhere and we can mix uh <clears throat> here i have this darker red if it's a lizard, you can mix a lizard with yellow to build some of the darker areas here of the foot so i know that there are some feathery textures so I, I kind of move my brush like this to create some texture definitely and we're building <coughs> this area and it's more in the shadow so I'm just getting a bit of a darker color with a horizontal move your brush horizontally <coughs> And it does leave interesting marks like that. Okay, and here the same one on this side. We can go even across these feathers. Okay, so taking that same color. Here, just the suggestion again to build a little bit more body to this, to add some more dimension. Okay, so we're building a little bit more here and a little on the tummy. All right, so let's see what's happening here in the face. Uh, I have so much pencil marks there, but that's okay. It's really, it's okay. That makes it more, it is, it's painting, it is art. I, I love my pencil marks. I leave them every time I finish a painting. I hardly ever erase I erase just some that are too crude and too interfering with the painting but others should stay so here we go let's see what we can do before we okay so there's more dark into the beak I'm gonna go into the beak and fix here add some more dark there is a plane that's basically what's inside inside the beak right here and that's his mouth too so we go here, just edit this dark area. All right, and it, it is fun. It looks like almost like a toy, but <laughs> it's so colorful, but it's really fun to paint. So 
to keep going. Maybe uh, wet some of these edges here. Have some edges soft, not all, but some. Soften them a little bit. Maybe more dark on that beak. I made it too long, a little bit too long. Exaggerated it a little bit, but that's good. As long as it's not uh, too crazy. Okay, so here I'm just adding some water to let it blend. And here we're gonna work on his little feathers on top of his head. Ah, something's majorly <laughs> off here. His face should go. There's more weight going in here. So you can always wet if you've done just like I did areas where, oh, that shouldn't be painted. Oh, there it should be wet. Just put clean water and I'm just going to lift it a bit. No, not a big deal again, unless we're making a scientific illustration, then we have to be ultra precise, super photorealistic, but that's not the whole, the goal of this. We're doing more artistic type of painting. So here, okay, so here's his eyes. The relation between eyes and beak in birds is very particular. We have to make sure that we draw this correctly because they're almost on the same level. So pay attention to exact location of the eye related to, to everything else. We don't want it too high. We don't want it too low. I've noticed that some, that makes a huge difference sometimes. People make mistakes. Okay, so a little bit of dark. Okay, so every is still wet, so I will wait a little bit. Wow, we're going to finish early. <laughs> I don't know how you guys are doing. Almost there. Starting, just starting. <laughs> thumbs up, I see thumbs up. <laughs> you can show me in progress, work in progress. Just a little tidbit, an interesting thing about parrots that I learned recently is yeah. that all the marks around their eyes are like a fingerprint. Oh, <gasps> that is good to know, Jeannie. That's awesome. Yeah, who knew? So they're all different. Huh. Yeah, wow. that's how you can tell, you can identify a parrot. Oh. I have a pr friend of mine that used to have one that was stolen, and <laughs> she was trying to get it back. Oh, that is so good to know. That's a great fact to know. Yeah, who knew? Yeah, there's so many interesting things to learn about nature, and uh, I definitely enjoy it. This is, okay, I'm just adding a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow here and there. And guys, feel free to show me what you have work in progress, but we're still building, still building. It's not finished yet. Things are still going. So I'm going to add, while this area in the head is drying, I'm going to add a bit of blue here at the very bottom. So just very sketchy, quick brush strokes with blue. A little bit of blue. And I always add a little water to maybe kill some of these edges. That does create movement. When you have a brush strokes that's endless and exactly the same, it's like a cutout in space. But things are constantly moving. And how we show movement is basically kill some portions of the edges. That is the trick of the trade or whatever I came up with. So here I'm just adding some more blue in his tail while the face is drying out. There's some more just brush strokes, little brush strokes. Here you can do a really dry brush. Little dots, have a little dots, little brush marks. Things should not be the same. Maybe here some more. Again, subtlety, we don't want to go too crazy. We want to keep it nice and fresh. A little bit. Okay, so let's continue these feathers. They continue a little, so I just got some blue. Just very quickly do a couple of brush strokes, not too many, just to add some continuation of these feathers. And I know they continue. If you guys have any questions, unmute yourself, ask questions, show me your work. 
comment, talk about those parrots. You can tell anything you want. So here we have some more dark. I'm just gonna add some more dark over here because I really love this contrast. So I'm just gonna add a couple of darks. Um, just like that. <coughs> just darken this area. And when you when in doubt where to put dark, always squint your eye and I'm just gonna go poop poop all here, just super dark with a dry brush technique. And maybe more horizontal so that's gonna darken it even more let's accentuate some of these just some some edge a little bit to kind of make it look like it's forward it's closer to us so it's gonna be nice and sharp just some areas not all and again here you can put a couple of dots maybe a little spatter so imagine with the dark i'm just using my dark and you can just hit it on your finger a little spatter like i always imagine when things are flying or are moving and this color stays in space somehow and continues into after you leave after you move the color is somewhere in space so that does add some more movement. Even some of the yellow. I'm just grabbing some yellow here, just adding some spatters maybe here, some yellow. Yeah, these parrots are really cool birds. Maybe smarter than we think. Um, so here we go okay so I'm just adding now the dark so a little bit more dark here to define some of these feathers at the bottom uh, more coming this way And again, adding some water to just kill some of these edges. Maybe some in here. A little bit, just a little here. And now you can I can take the some of the dark color of the background and maybe define some of these feathers here obviously some of the background basically painting the negative shape around so to give them a little bit of definition we should have jungle music in the background like as if we're in the rainforest <laughs> <laughs> while we paint these <laughs> that will be great that's why i always put my wave music <laughs> in some of these videos because when we painted the waves it's nice to just be immersed into your subject more inspiring so here i'm just going to add a little bit more It shouldn't be parallel. All these lines should not be parallel to each other, not the same. We're gonna add what the brush are you using right now? What brush? This is a Chinese yeah, brush. It's a, I think it's a calligraphy brush. I have no idea what size it is. It doesn't say anything and it's all written in Chinese. So, but you okay. can, you can tell. Uh, I can show you different brushes. Definitely in uh, Jerry's, there are similar, similar brush, brushes. This one is sable, meaning it's natural hair. But anything that has a point and it's soft, like a medium, I don't know. Well, I have no idea what size. But you can see it, right? Just, it's a small. Yeah, I don't think I have a calligraphy brush, right? Yeah. I, I mean, they're called calligraphy, but they're used for watercolor, so... 
I just bought this when I was in China. I have a whole bunch of brushes that I bought in Jerry, at Jerry's Artorama that I used to use a lot and they're all pretty much similar to this. A little bit fatter, a little bit rounder and fatter. They hold more water, but for me this is good. Just experiment. Not everybody likes certain things and some people love to paint with just flats and I, I love flat brushes especially if you paint landscapes or cityscapes where we have all these buildings and you can get so many nice straight lines with just a bunch of flat brushes so they're great to have mm -hmm. also in your in your I guess set so here we have some more lines here but I just don't want it to, again, be outlined. So I'm killing some of these edges right there. And again, grabbing a little bit of a warmer. Uh, if you guys want to mute yourself because we're getting some feedback from somebody, unless you're asking a question, I'm getting some feedback from somebody. Okay, so here is more yellow just to define some of these. All right. Okay, so it has to be nice and fun. And here I'm going to add now these dark, dark lines in the face. Nice, refined, small brush, nice point. We're going to get this little eye squared away. So it's almost like a perfect circle around. Yeah. So make sure it's not completely outlined. So start, stop. That's how we, we paint our lines. Hopefully my head is not in the way. All right. Okay. So here we go. Here's some lines. And there's some more. The fingerprints of the parrot. Who knew? That's good. That's good information. Genie. Yeah. <laughs> it's too cool. So I have to really look closely to see what's going on. Yeah, there's some very refined lines there. Definitely just take a small brush, pay attention to this because our painting should have small details in some areas not everywhere and some really expressive areas that's what makes it very fun uh, again the opposites i always talk about uh, rough smooth you have to have some quiet areas big small think about all of these some dry brush some textures and some smooth areas where the eye can just rest and as long as we have not everything spelled out, some things could be just a suggestion. Uh, we let the brain finish the work, creates more interest, and people will look at it longer. They'll stay on it a little bit longer. So I'm just adding some more details here on that face. Feel free to really uh, text me any suggestion. Uh, send me emails with suggestions of what birds you want to you want to uh, paint. I was thinking of the next one should be a, probably a bird of prey, something more ominous, and we're gonna paint more monochromatic with blacks and blues. I thought that would be fun, and then eventually we can paint a more cute bird, like a little cardinal, red cardinals. They're cool to paint. You can always turn them into a Christmas card. Okay. Just fixing my camera. So how are we doing with time? Oh, 228. What? We have only we have a whole 30 minutes. Oh, I'm so sorry. That is my phone in the way that I'm recording this. Okay. We have whole 30 minutes, guys. We can just... Ronaldo, I don't, I don't know if you can see this. Let me see. Oh. Oh, yes. 
I see. That it. might be a possibility. Let me uh, show you another. Oh, yes. I that yeah, is. These are, these are some robins in flight. The robins. Okay. Yeah, they're cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, we can have a whole composition and we can include, you know, branches and the way we go. I think we can paint two paintings per class. What do you guys think? May <laughs> you're a superwoman. <laughs> you super, you're a super artist. You can do it. You can do it. Let me just move this out of the way. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, that was definitely great. I don't know. Wow, that's amazing how you capture this. Definitely good camera. I've got, I've got the right camera. Yeah, good cameras, good lenses. Yeah. But I have I have some others of some uh, some crows that are really quite interesting. Oh. Uh, blacks and blues. Yeah. Too, see what you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, I'd love to see. Definitely, I have so many crows around my area. I wish I had a nice camera to take pictures. Crows are cool. Yeah, they really. Oh, they're look. a lot. Of, they're they're amazing. They're a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Super cool. All right, so we keep going. So hopefully, here all this these lines that they just painted around that face, they all started to blend together. But that's okay. You can always go back with a little white, and we can do that with a little white and bring out some lost detail if anything's been lost. But I wouldn't recommend going too much uh, with into your painting. We want to keep it nice and fresh. If you really, really want to paint some more detail, just pick one area and only and concentrate on that only. Everything else could be nice and expressive to show movement. So I'm just adding some accents here uh, around these wings. So some blue, I'm just tapping some blue here. There is some blue, tap, tap. Just a little marks, make sure you do it in a nice, cool, spontaneous way. We're going to add some more dark here. Some dots. Just imagine this bird is flying, things are happening. A little more definition on that foot. Here's some dark. I basically mixed some indigo with yellow and I got a nice, some dark tone. So a little bit of dark, just a few brush marks. Don't go into extra detail there because that area here is probably moving fast. And there's the claw. And in my opinion, less is more. You know, normally I'll probably just stop very soon because the more I add, the more um, I make it look too, too much. And really, I don't see any reason why I should be adding any more detail. Only if my values are off, I would accentuate the dark or if this is too light you can just take a big bit like the bottom part of these wings here they seem a bit light i want to maybe darken them a little bit so i'll mix some some of this indigo some of the yellow to create a darker value see how this is a nice interesting value indigo and yellow and i think we can just add these darks right here so whatever decision you make, don't be timid, don't be afraid, be very brave. You made the decision, you follow through, and you do it in a nice, brave way. You don't worry, there are no mistakes in watercolor. <laughs> As opposed to what people think and believe, watercolor is just a very fun medium. You can do a lot with it. So here I'm just tapping on some of these edges and extending this dark a little bit more but generally I just wanted this not to be so light 
so this way more light is coming here that's where the light mainly is um, so maybe a few accents I'm just gonna grab this bright yellow here that I have it's a nice bright almost orange which yellow is that I have to see what it is it's I think it's that permanent yellow deep uh, from the PWC set. Every set have their own names. Every brand have their own names. So as long as it's nice, bright yellow, orange, uh, I'm good. And here we can add some accents on this area, on that part. Just a couple of brush strokes like that. I know, keep this light, keep this area light, we don't want to lose it. Maybe a little bit more on his stomach, some more orange or some red right here. Just a little warmer tones. It may be closer, yeah, just some definition, just quick brush strokes like this. One, two, no more. And there goes our bird, crazy bird in flight. Now you can use a rigger, rigger brush, or liner brush, whatever they call it. We can get some dark without too much water and do with a dry brush a couple of lines like some of these feathers could be just our lines going maybe a couple of or just a few and here dry brush it thin lines going out If the dark is drying too much, uh, too light, you just pop it some more here, just to accentuate. And my eye goes right here into his face. And all these feathers are leading you into that. So, so good. And if you lost some of these, you can always edit. I'm just gonna add some of these lines that I lost. And you can pop in some weight, as I said. If you've lost some of your details, you can always come back and just use pure white straight from the tube and add some highlights. Like around his eye, I just wanted this eye to be really specific, so. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to grab this titanium white and just dip, dip right into the tube and just paint a little bit around this pupil to make sure we see that eye well. You can have some spatter with the white if you make a little puddle here with white a little bit you can spatter in some areas just a little tad bit not too much i know there is some lighter feathers try not to paint with white just a little bit there just white is there for accents and highlights so i'm just dabbing a little bit here on the feathers that may have been there or I lost and maybe here where I lost the white right there Ta -da. so guys feel free to, to show me what you got this is our bird if you're not ready yet to show don't worry we're still painting we're still painting there's plenty of time I didn't realize that this was going to be a, such a quick painting. 
and we're going to be adding I'm just adding some more accents with this very bright blue because I think in reality this blue is quite bright it creates a nice contrast with the yellow so I love that and daily you've got your first person showing oh I'm so sorry here we see uh Pradia Pradia side by side you barely see your up close to. Oh yeah, let me let me change my setting here on, on this because my layout should be stacked, right? All right, very good, Pradia. Very nice, beautiful. I love that. I would suggest you actually darken your background a little more, and that's gonna pop your bird even more. You can just wet the whole background and just add some more dark. But it's lovely. I love you. You drew it so well. Yeah, the thing is, you know. I wanted to work on the background, but it seems that, you know, uh, how do you avoid getting so close to the bird? Do you just paint around the bird and leave like a halo around it? No halos. Just avoid halos as the plague. Basically, it's better for the background to go into the bird than just paint around. I would wet like this whole area, even if you leave some light, maybe above. I love that blue, but maybe the rest just wet it and just go with a big brush you can just grab a very big brush and just go whoo, whoo, kind of in a very expressive way just to darken the value um it will make this bird pop a little bit but you do you you did a fantastic job with uh, the feathers uh i'll darken these feathers up top here just with a bigger brush so make sure that they're not so much like lines but a little bit thicker like these feathers should be a bit thicker and a little bit darker so just that but other than that looks fabulous i love the colors yeah looking good thank you for showing being brave to show yes feel free to show we have tons of time now to show <laughs> show it up. okay we have dini dini that is awesome that is awesome yes fabulous 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 i love the movement i love the movement i love the brave lines there everything is flying this bird is flying for sure you may want to even um uh, no it looks really good my suggestion would be maybe his body could be a little bit more orange maybe heavy because it it's almost the same value as that wing. Just let's darken this body and make it more orange. But other than that, looks really good. I love the expressiveness. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Kathy. I see Kathy. Yeah. Yay. Wow, you guys painting so different, but each one is really good. Kathy, you did a great job with your values. I am very impressed. You did this medium value for the background and dark for the wings. You drew it really well. It looks awesome. Let's soften these. Uh, these somehow look a bit more. These? Yeah. On the light. Yeah, the light wings. If you want to soften them somehow, I don't know. Uh, don't just water and kind of wipe with a little bit of paper towel so they're not so sharp but i the love the edges you mean soft the edges, edges the edges yeah if you may want to if you can if you can if you don't if you if it's gonna mess up your painting don't worry about it i would just add some water and kind of wipe with a little bit of water just to soften them a bit but okay. it looks fabulous i love the values like the first thing that struck me is like the values are correct i see medium dark and light maybe some orange on the stomach some more dark like, yeah a little dark so it's heavier here in his body okay. is heavier yeah looks okay. good cool. it looks great thank you sure i see Ka catherine catherine oh no sorry. i see all right so this is debbie no yeah. Yes, Debbie. This is Debbie. Yay! That is awesome. That is awesome. Look at that. I love that background and how it's connecting with those feathers. Looking really good. You guys are better than with fitting the bird into the uh, paper than me. <laughs> 
this is so good this is great some blue i'll add some more blue just blue a few blue accents debbie other than that your values are great i love this expression background though don't, don't touch it and i'll just put a few blue accents here in the back and his head and i think maybe in the in, the, in that wing here over here but just just a few like really bright blue just pop in and it's gonna really liven it up even more awesome anybody else we have time we have plenty of time okay gretchen there you go wow that is lovely <gasps> I think I need more darks down here to balance the dark up here. And I may need to go over the background again. I got some splatters and some blues. So would you recommend redoing the background with more darks to, to help? I, I like it. I like your background. I know it looks a little lighter, but if you go over it, it may it may make it a bit too not as expressive so why don't you make your bird a little bit darker i would maybe add some more orange in the body and i love what you did with the bird it's just flying all over i love it you may want to actually extend these feathers more kind of maybe darken them a little bit just darken this top area the wing where the wing the, the dark wing uh no the right wing the dark wings on the that part that that's it yes that part darker. longer darker maybe um, more expressive and it's going to look at like it's really going to focus there but i somehow love your background it's really awesome uh if you want to add some dark maybe on the right side just a bit just water it and just add some dark and kind of connect this this wing with the background like make it all flow with it you can try that but the bird is looking good. I love your technique. I love the wet on wet and all the, the expressiveness. You have the blue accents here. Yeah, make these feathers longer, the ones on the top. I don't know if you're seeing me where I'm pointing, but I'm <laughs> just pointing. So this area, this area here, maybe extend them a little bit more. Over the head or over towards the edge a little bit. Even if you crop it, it just, just, and that's where you can start kind of like throw some water, throw some water here, extend these, and just make a bit of a darkness over there on that upper right side. Okay. That's cool. it. I'll do that. This looks fun. <laughs> that's awesome. Looks good. Looks very good, guys. Yeah. Yes, keep going. If you want to add some more details. Wow, that was. <laughs> We need to have two birds in the bay. Oh, wow. Look at that. I don't see you. Oh, this is Susan, right? Susan, because it's, I so don't see your names. But okay, so this looks very good. That looks really, really good. I love these feathers. I love it. So Susan, again, if you, the same thing as Gretchen. If you want to extend these feathers a little bit more, it will make it more dramatic. Just a couple of more, a little bit slightly longer. Looking great looking really good more orange I'm, I'm not going to put away yes so i don't know how to do it away you know just like i can do something yeah when and wet basically is just clean water just grab some big brush clean water and then mix a big puddle of paint but you have a lot of water too and just dab it into it and let it flow and do its thing but it looks fabulous. Uh, just add, why don't you add some uh, blue accent here? I think there should be some blue accent. And yeah, and that's about it. It looks really, really good. I love it. I love that background. The background is amazing. Really amazing. Just, yeah, if you extend those feathers, make them kind of flow a little bit more. You guys are gonna do a great job. But everybody is doing fabulous. I added more orange. Yes, let me see. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you're fast, Dini. <laughs> looking good, looking good. Yeah, so this way we can separate his body. Yeah. The light that I have here. Oh. Yeah, it is washes it out. Okay, no, I love it. Looking great. Look at the, those wings and things are flying everywhere. I love that. And you definitely, yeah. Now the body is separated and it's more substantial. So it, just imagine how his body has more volume and more mass compared to these 
feathers, so looking great. Yeah, my, my uh, light is also washing everything. So what I'm seeing there is not exactly what it is in reality, but that's the nature of lighting. And you guys can always, you know, take a big brush if you feel like some areas are not working. And speaking of wet on wet, what Susan was saying, if you have something already, and how do we add to it? So I would, for example, just put some clean water just clean water over these wings and if i want something to pop i'll just take the color here just mix a nice puddle, puddle, puddle of yellow and just pop some yellow just to kind of unify a little bit this area and then you can you know swipe with wet, wet paper towel that's pretty much it but when you mix your color make sure it's it's clean it's fresh not too, not too much water, but enough to to pop really in this in this area. So just that's pretty much what I want, and does create nice blends. So okay, so we have. That looks great with you. Gretchen. Oh, Gretchen. Okay, I see it now on my other monitor because this thing, my Wi-Fi obviously is love it. Now that you made those wings go out of the edge, it's amazing. Yeah, I would not touch the background. It looks really great because you have all the values already. Yeah, and now love there's it. more differentiation, I think, between the wing and the background. Yep. Good. Oh, yeah. now I see it. I love it. I love it. Oh, you did a fantastic job. Fabulous. You did a fantastic job. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I can't focus when I talk. Oh, look at this. Fabulous. Susan, yes. Big, yeah. You extended those wings. Looking great. Looking wonderful. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Looking great. Great job. Great job, you guys. Fantastic. So hopefully you got the gist of it of where we are going with this uh, obviously if it's a static bird just sitting there it will be a bit more calmer but we're still going to be throwing paint around as usual so nothing to worry about and i like to add some expressive element usually it's either the background or in this case we added a lot of expressiveness with the wings but you should have some areas that is wild uh, even if it's not everywhere, just 75%. How about that? <laughs> it should be a bit on the wild side. So that always helps. But, okay, so here I'm just moving around. Okay, so we keep going. Ludmilla, I just sent you some uh, crow pictures. Okay, great. I'll take a look. I'll send it to you on Messenger. Oh, okay. Super. Thank you so much, Jenny. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, because sometimes uh, something taken by a normal human being, not a photographer, <laughs> not what's on the See internet. Like, See if you like, and I've got all, all kinds of other birds too. I have some wonderful woodpecker, but those, that's a lot of detail. Really? Yeah, I mean, look how much time we have. We have whole hour and a half. We can actually knock it out. Let me see that. If it has a lot of detail, it's okay. I mean, you can also spatter here in this light area some yellow, just a little bit. I'm just getting some yellow and just spatter, spatter. In the, in the light area. I can't check my uh, messenger now, but I'll definitely take a look because I'm using my phone to record. I know something popped in my messenger, but I'll take a look. <laughs> so you guys, uh, yeah, don't, I would not overwork this. If you really want to accentuate some areas, just keep going. But generally it should be should be less is more and the body again i'll probably add some more orange some more orange here in that body 
just a bit do that and maybe going over here because we should be all in the shadow this this whole shadow area but not much and and yeah just uh, kind of take things maybe add some i have this yellow i told you this lemon yellow that is so opaque and it's perfect for some last second details that are missed so i'm just gonna add a bit of an accent here maybe a bit of an accent over here just dots here and there and not too much And yeah, you can create excitement, a lot of excitement with the spatter, with the blooms, with everything. And if you lost some of these, I know I wanted those to blend a bit, but if you want to have some edge I'm just gonna get some blue really bright blue and pop some of the top of these just so they're not completely lost and that's it we'll keep it nice and expressive You can add lines, sketchy lines. We did add those, but sometimes I, I'd like to add some more sketchy lines, especially with birds. That does help. Kind of create some movement. Couple of, not too much, just a, a few dots here and there. These are all our finishing touches. Couple of dots, this one. Right, but everything is all about values, really, and edges. Most of it is values, edges, values, edges. So make sure not all your edges are the same. Make sure that your values are very distinct and you have strong darks, strong medium values, strong light values. just didn't like how parallel my lines were here they were just da, 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 too too parallel because I was painting the negative shape and yes yeah, something must be done over there so that's maybe an additional but I would just paint over it so it's not so obvious just adding some more and that's it I'm, I'm not gonna touch mine because mine is uh, getting overworked a little bit but guys feel free to show me what's going on here with your paintings how you're progressing okay Wendy 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 okay let me just change my layout again okay here we go stack <gasps> beautiful that is so beautiful look at that it's so moody it's beautiful i love your colors they're great they're absolutely great yeah you really blended your feathers like they're all over so i, I like that i like you may want to accentuate maybe some feathers here in the foreground some kind of define some edges here in the very uh here on the on that the ones that are close to us uh, these here on the right side that are here. close to us. 
You're muted, Wendy. We can't hear you. <laughs> it's okay. I always forget. So, so <laughs> I, I understand. So, so the ones that are at the front, I should sharpen those edges. Sharpen, yeah, a few, just a few, just some of those because they're really close to us. So that's going to create more depth. But looks good. Looks great. Okay. Looking awesome. Is that as easy as you, you guys thought it was going to be? It, it's easier, <laughs> right? We thought it was going to be so hard. <laughs> yeah, I think something with my internet connection at the, at the beginning, but I took notes and took things.